Once our sense of personal power was associated with the community we belonged to and with our relationship with the natural world around us, along with elements of the mysterious other world, which was probably the most powerful influence of all in earlier times. Now the power is held not by natural community, but by the crowd, a crowd of individuals. And each developing individual must find ways of standing out in the crowd so that that person retains a sense of personal power. This is a concept, an impulse we all now accept, bequeathed to us by the age of technology, by the age of self. And of course, our personal power, no longer fueled by being integral to Earth, is now fueled by a grandiosity, which we believe to be natural and normal. We seem to have lost the animal in us or within us, we could say where personal power is concerned. We seem to have lost that connection with the natural world within us. I don't like saying the word within, as you probably already know, but because it, it sets us up for all different uh, kinds of definitions of what we are, and we can sometimes uh, run away with that. But uh, perhaps you understand what I mean. The animal we would have called upon that was the human animal for matters of communication, for interacting with others and for using what whatever we had about ourselves that helped us to get along and uh, make things work socially and in many other ways, um, that seems to have vanished uh, considerably. Because we called upon the animal inside us, because we called upon animal communication in, a, in the human sense, we also would have had access to the animal sense of self, shall we say, uh, in many other species, many other beings. So for instance, uh, all pack animals or herd animals, we would have considered them to be sometimes people like us. It's just that they took a different form. And our form was unique to us. So there was a power in this, a power in the pack, a power in the herd, a power in the group, a power in the community, a power in the tribe. And if we really think about this, we can begin to understand that power was sort of distributed between each individual who was part of that tribe. In much earlier times, we would have referred to ourselves as an individual as being part of that tribe. And that meant part of the collective. That meant seeing ourselves as one of many. Um, it's sometimes hard to put this into words because if you think about how we are today, how as individuals we relate to each other as individuals and we don't believe we should do it any other way, then we're sort of compartmentalising ourselves. We're, we're packaging ourselves up to uh, be this one person, this one individual who has everything it takes to communicate with other people. Invariably, when you spoke to a member of a tribe in prehistoric times, you would be addressing the whole of his or her tribe. It was quite common for tribal folk in prehistoric times to refer to themselves as the group. We, they might say, or the people of the river say this, or the people of the river think that. Um, this was something that was very common, even in more recent times with tribal folk. Now, where this relates to power is very crucial, 
because today uh, personal power is something we all know we should have, but sometimes we don't know how to find it. And personal power to me means uh, trying to, not only trying to find the best in myself, what I can find of myself when I'm thinking about exerting myself out in society or within a community of people. Um, it means calling upon that ancient something that could be there that perhaps my ancestors might have used. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to run away with myself if I do this. So I think it's something we all need to bear in mind in many respects. We all need to take on board the fact that if we don't have a sense of personal power about ourselves, then we're not going to find any self-respect, we're not going to find any self-worth, self-belief, all those things that we know that we need to function in life. Now, when we're talking about the self, we have to look at it in a specific way. And this is where the ancient perspective comes in. Because today, if we talk about the self, it, it carries an element of, I can only say, um, uh, egoism and grandiosity, because it means we have to push and push and push ourselves forward as individuals uh, to, to try uh, to gain some recognition. And that isn't a very good thing to do. It isn't a pleasant thing to do. And it sometimes takes all our effort to try to be recognised. How do we find that balance? When we're faced with trying to push ourselves forward, trying to find some personal power in this society without sacrificing any of anything of ourselves, how do we find that balance between getting out there and trying to do it in a way that calls upon something ancient, whereupon we're exerting ourselves in a much more healthy way where we're not overdoing it or underdoing it. Um, we all know what it's like to hold back and not push ourselves forward. And we all know what it's like to say, oh, I wish I'd said this or that when I was with those people. We all also know, or we should do, what it's like to say, oh, crumbs, why did I say that? Why did I, why did I use those words? They probably think I'm weird now. <laughs> there, 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 there is this element we have in us where we try to push ourselves forward and we have to try to do it in a way where we feel good about ourselves well for a start we're never going to do it perfectly we're never going to be able to communicate or use our own personal power in a perfect sense so perfectly that we're not going to think about it afterwards and think I should have pushed myself forward more or I should have held back more. Let's take it back to the beginning. Personal power is something we all need and we have a hard fight sometimes in using it without giving it all away. If we start to give our personal power away in the sense that when we're with people, they are putting across to us that they want us to be a certain way and do a certain thing and say a certain thing and act in a way that doesn't feel comfortable to us, then that's not so good. So this is what I mean about using an ancient perspective, because what that means is that we'll be true to ourselves and above all, we'll be seeing the situation as it is. We'll be gaining some perspective on what is actually happening when we are interacting and what we're being required to give or do or say. It isn't always easy because whenever we're with, especially when we're with a group of strangers, I think it's it, it, it can be especially difficult to uh, call upon something in ourselves that interacts with people in a spontaneous way. We're not all good at being spontaneous. And that's when we usually make a little bit of a mess and say, oh, I shouldn't have said that or I didn't say enough, blah, blah, blah. 
But it's very crucial not to uh, put yourself in such a situation with trying to find some sort of power in, inside yourself uh, so that you uh, give a lot of what it is away and you end up not being yourself. I think there's nothing worse than that. So what we need to try to do is call upon that animal instinct again. We go back to the animal instinct and just be as you need to be. Uh, the person that you are, just be who you are. But start thinking now, start thinking as soon as you possibly can about gaining self-respect for yourself gaining self-worth. Spend some time meditating on it. Think about it. Think about it as you go about your daily business when you're on your own. Don't leave it to the last minute so that when you go into groups or when you're faced with um, talking to somebody, you feel you have no power or you have too much power. It's quite often the case, actually, that people who have no power are more aware of it than people who have power. I've noticed this an awful lot in groups I've worked with. And when we try to uh, work on exercises where we're trying to work out how much power we have and whether we need to gain more self-respect. And I've noticed the people who are rather a lot more dominant find it hard to step back because something in them keeps shooting them forward. Yes. So if you are the sort of person who needs to come forward, who needs to uh, find more power and not lose it so that you don't feel as if somebody's taking you for a ride or some somebody's walking all over you or whatever, a good tip, don't try to show your good side. Remember, there's nothing better, nothing more liberating than showing your natural side. Don't try to show that you are trying to find the good in someone else. Somebody was saying this to me recently. Uh, this person isn't the only one. There's a lot of people who say this to me. And the first thing I come back and say to them is, do not try to find the good in other people. Find the real. Do not lose your own self-respect, your own self-worth, your own self-belief by feeding everything you have into the other person and trying to see them as the good person so that you can match them in, good, in goodness. I know it sounds a bit odd, or perhaps it doesn't. Um, you're, not going to, you're not going to get anywhere like this. You must see what's between you. You must see the real. You must see that you are someone, they are someone, both trying to communicate with each other and you don't need to lose your self-respect by believing that you've got to see the good in someone else. If you start to see the good in someone else or try to find it, you're going to blind yourself. You're going to be a little bit blinkered, shall we say. And you're going to be feeding everything into that other person. Well, that's ripe. That's a prime situation for them saying, aha, this person is uh, easy pickings. I can walk over. Especially if you get somebody who's, who's quite narcissistic, that, that is sure going to happen. You don't need to close off. You don't need to get rid of your personal power entirely and hide it. You don't need to do that. Equally, you don't need to shoot forward and show them how bold you are. What you need to do is start to see what is real, what is actually taking place. Strip it all down. Strip it all down to what it actually is. You communicating with someone else, you wanting to exert whatever you've got, your own power, and it doesn't need to shoot forward, it doesn't need to hold back, but you need to just be yourself. There's nothing better than being yourself, let's be honest. Some years ago, I worked with a lady who was having a lot of trouble with her own self-worth, and she was very upset. And I realised that she was feeding all her power into her hair. She had long dreadlocks and... This is something we can do sometimes, is feed the power into a part of our person. 
because we're afraid of using it ourselves. This, of course, doesn't mean I'm saying that everyone with dreadlocks has diminished personal power. What I am saying is that we can often feed our power into another part of ourselves than the part that should be using it. If you can start to introduce your own self-belief and your own self-worth, all that you have that you are, and start to walk about with that. See yourself as a friend. I'm often saying this to people as well. You must start to see yourself as your best friend, your truest friend, because there's no one else who's going to understand you like you will. So therefore, when you're communicating with somebody, you will be able to call upon that ancient primeval animal instinct and rely on it. And you'll be able to just communicate as you need to communicate. Why should you do anything else? We don't need to do anything else. We don't need to put ourselves down or pump ourselves up. We just need to be ourselves. And being yourself is that does contain that ancientness. It contains everything that's ancient about you. And what's wrong with being you? You're fine. Remember, you're not unique. You're not special. You're not this blessed, sacred person. That's all bullshit, to be honest. That's all, that's all made up. That's new age. It, 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 none of us are sacred. We're all just ordinary human beings, just as we always were. It's the earth outside the window. That's the thing that's sacred. Um, there's nothing sacred about ourselves when we're trying to communicate with another person. Um, what we've got to do is just start getting in this into perspective, into an ancient perspective, and realise that we're just ordinary beings. And that makes us okay. That makes us fine. That makes us lovable. You can love yourself for that. And it means you're stripping everything down and getting back to basics, getting back to what you, what you are. So think about that animal self within you, animism. Remember, there's a lot to be said for that. I've done videos on that. Check them out if you want to... Uh, uh, hear what I've got to say about animism. We've lost a lot of that, but we've got to get back to it. Um, and if we can, just spend some time thinking about this before you go and interact with people, especially if you meet someone new. If you're meeting someone new, it's really important that you um, don't sacrifice anything of yourself don't push anything back in yourself and don't be overbold in yourself. Just be, just be you. Have self-respect. That will come across the other person and they will not walk all over you if, you if you show that, if you believe that about yourself. Time to believe. Time to believe that you are you and you are worthy. You are worthy of all sorts of things that you can do in this world. But don't get carried away with it. No grandiosity. You don't have to do that. No sort of I'm sacred. I'm the best person since sliced bread and all that sort of thing. It, that, that, just, just be you. Just be ordinary. And that makes you a really terrific and understanding person. Someone everyone might want to be with. Just be you as you normally are. And take it from there. Yeah. Okay. See you again soon. Thanks for listening.